Privet Katila, ya ni hao de shuo. Actually, you know, I'm actually doing really well, actually. I actually really need to change my intro because um, I'm actually doing great today. I'm not doing bad at all. Um, in this video, I actually wanted to discuss um, a few personal struggles that I've been um, going through. And most importantly, my recent conversion to Christianity and my religious journey in general. So once upon a time, about a few weeks ago, I should say, um, I was heading up to visit family for Thanksgiving, and things were going pretty normal. Um, but in my personal life, time was running out. I just kept slipping. Now, what ha what happened on the day after Thanksgiving was, and I, I don't know how to say this without sounding hyperbolic, but I found God. Like, I had a sort of like a religious epiphany, or a road to Damascus moment, if you will. And I finally converted to Christianity. So I wanted to explain why. Like, what brought me finally to convert? What do I actually believe now? Well, to kind of understand this, I need to open up to, to you guys about um, a few struggles of mine in my past. Um, so my childhood was just perfect. And and this might have been tainted by my by childhood nostalgia, but damn it, it... It was truly beautiful. I, you know, I, I lived on a like a ten acre farming estate with with chickens and geese and dogs and cats, peacocks and and even emus. Um, I had a dad and a mom and the most sweetest grandmother in the whole world. Even though she only spoke Russian, she was amazing. Um, the fa you know my family was strongly intact. You know, just the most loving people I could ever ask for, and I even had a little brother. There was a simplicity in my life, a stability that seems so foreign to me now. You know, I live, I live day to day, not not dragging on, hoping for something to fill my soul in life, but every day was a new day. You know, just filled with happiness and joy, and just it was just a start of a new adventure every single day. You know, I I went to a, a religious preschool, a pretty well funded elementary school. You know, and I was a Christian. You know, I prayed to God to go to sleep. Um, um, you know, I wasn't like a hundred percent, you know, I was just a basic Christian. And uh, I remember uh, every night I would go to sleep and the prayer kind of went like this. Um, now I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord, my soul to keep to guide me through the starry night and wake me at the break of light. If I should live another day, I pray the Lord to guide my way. You know, there is beauty in this world and it's worth fighting for, you know, but all this stability came tumbling down around at the end of 2012. And I know it's a bit superstitious of, of, of me, but um, do you guys remember the, how the world was supposed to end on December 21st, 2012? Well, for all intents and purposes, the world did end for me. Despite, you know, the blissfulness of stability of my childhood, there were some things that were bubbling in the background. My dad had been out of luck in securing a high-paying job, and after the Great Recession hit, we were especially hit hard um after a few bad cho you know cho uh, choices and such uh, we were going broke um because of this my mom started hanging out with other men for dating because my dad you know was barely able to you know do any he was just trying to just pay the bills without us going broke and she's like okay well i need to do you know she was kind of she started looking at other men and um you know i didn't know it at the time i you know i thought they were just friends right but you know they when they took you know they took me um to i mean not me but they took my mom and my mom brought me and my brother uh to like to the beach and other states amusement parks you know i got my first computer and phone from them and so it, i didn't really see, i i there was this and then you know then my dad figured it out and the thing that broke my the you know my what the, the straw that broke the camel's back was um when my father finally sold the this my child the childhood estate so my parents never yelled at each other or beat each other up but things were getting tense and so my father sold the house to prevent us from going broke and and then he moved across the country all you know literally across the entire country and expected us to come move in with him and it was a bit surreal you know I'm like oh we're moving out well and then my parents got into a divorce and you know i and i don't mean like you know um you know, I, I, and I don't mean like, 
oh, it was just divorced and things. It was a very ugly divorce. You know, the divorce wasn't clean. It, and over the next, like, two or three years, it, there was, we were literally dragged to court, and we had, they were arguing and fighting over custody, yelling, you know, my mother f- fell into drunkenness. Um, and, and I literally had to testify in court about why I wanted to, you know, stay in, you know, in my home state. And, and you know, um, so my, my parents were divorcing. You know, my childhood home was gone. And, you know, school started to become more dramatic and stressful. It wasn't just, oh, the school is nice. And it, there's, um, and I did some, and, and all that was just, and after that, I, I did some things, some really bad things, things I'm not exactly proud of that I won't mention here. And I did, and I did some bad like actions, and and I figured out a few things about myself during those ne- the next three or four years after the divorce and moving out. You know, demons with that I wish I could scram away. It, it was a really bad fall from grace. Um. So I all this, I I I plunged in deep into depression. You know, walling over my mistakes, trying to grapple with me. You know, I felt like I was floating in like an endless void. You know, things just seemed a lot more gloomy, and I sludged day to day and even thought about taking my own life. Like, I never attempted it. I never seriously, like, oh, was going to do it, but I'm like, well, you know, well, I'm just passing through life just as an empty soul. And through all this despair, I lost my faith in God. And for until towards 2015, I would say I was, like, in the most, till the end of 2015, I would say after 20... Uh, after like at the beginning of 2013 to like the end of 2015, I would say I was, I was in the most downtrodden, disorderly, and meaningless meaningless point of my existence, and I was just existing, but I was just like this hollowed out shell, just empty. But eventually, as the years went on, I fought back. In, in, in a weird way, I kept faith in myself, and I just kept marching forward. Um, I will say during that one of the biggest things that helped me was, and I I, I and now it's kind of weird to admit this, but it was My Little Pony that helped me out. I, I'm not a My Little Pony fan anymore, but it, it during that really dark time in my life, um, for the for the like the three years after the huge loss of everything, it and trying to grapple with myself, it uh it really was a light in the dark, you know. Um I but I just kept marching. You know, I I started to plan a future for me and a me that was better than the degenerate lost soul that I found myself in. You know, I started working out, being more social, actually getting friends, and, you know, I set goals for myself. I'm like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this and that. You know, life was getting better, and better every year. Now, one of the big... Now, with that background being set, what, I, I'm going to go a little bit on a little little bit of a talking thing here, but so one of the biggest things I'm still struggling to, in despite all my progress for the last few years, was the issue of pornography and that's a story all on its own and I'll, I'll i'll i don't want to go too deep into it but i just kind of want to explain just very broadly i'm not going to go into everything i've done about it but but it's something i'm deeply addicted to um i recall times just masturbating to it to like for god like for god knows like like five hours at a time trying to find the highest fix you know i was trying to hook up with the with the town slut it, you know it was just I was just all drenched in it, you know. I was just it had its tentacles wrapped around me, and but I fought on, and and one of my biggest vices of lust was getting pushed back. I haven't completely defeated it, but I was fighting back, and it was getting better and better. So a new decade is approaching, things are looking up, but the, and but the twenty twenty is going to be a year when I finally cast off the addiction of pornographer for good. But that Thanksgiving, I failed. And, you know, I was on this, like, a, almost a month-long streak, and and I was just, the urge took me over. You know, I, I I just, like, I'm like, oh, I know this is something I should, but I just, I fell back into it. Just, it took me over. I, you know, I went on this, like, role-playing website, and, you know, I got some nudes, and but that doesn't, wasn't enough for me. I had to, like, keep trying. I had to keep trying to get more porn, more, you know, role-play with more people, and, and just, I, I fell down this rabbit hole, and it took, it was, like, for three hours, I was just jerking it, and then, when I finally came, it just the, the demon just went away. Just like, and then you 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 sit there, and I was just, I was in the bathroom, and I just sat there for uh, oh, you know a few minutes, just contemplating. I'm like, man, I, I when I finally finished, I was just this. I, I felt like this humiliated, abused man. You know, when the high goes, you know that's when you realize how dirty you really are. You don't you don't think about how much what you're doing when you're in it, but 
when you finally finish, you're like, wow, like, like, how could I be so weak? You know, I, I, I you know, I keep, and I, you know, I can't keep on falling back on my sins every week or two. You know, I, I needed a permanent solution. You know, um, you know, I'm like this, I can't, how, how am I, how is this, how do I, you know, I want to, I, I'm, I have a full faith in trying to fight it, but how, you know, if, if the urge comes and I just fall for it, how do I fight back? So I, I poured myself some cranberry juice and, um, um, and I got myself a roll of bread and I got on my knees and prayed. I legit, I, I went, I went back to the couch that I was sleeping and I, I went on my knees and prayed. And I, and I legitimately prayed, not like very wishful. I, I actually, you know, I haven't actually legitimately played in, I have something, that's something I haven't done for years. And I, you know, I begged, pleaded with whatever God was out there. I was, and, you know, just to help give me strength. I, you know, I said, I wanted to believe, I want to know, like, is there something bigger than all this? At first I felt like I was just talking to myself. You know, my eyes, you know, I was, I kept praying though. My eyes were shut and, you know, I just holding, you know, just begging, crying. And, and then I felt it. And, and in that moment, um, no, and no, there was like, it wasn't like God just came down and was in the live in that living room with me or I didn't even hear him, but I felt it. Yeah. You know, but I, like I knew someone or, you know, or something was listening to me. But not like any, I, I knew who it was. Like I knew there was some sort of force there that was listening to me and understanding my hardship and suffering. And at that moment, I just believed. I, I believed in Jesus. I, I prayed for God to come into my heart. I begged him for his forgiveness for all my past misgivings. And I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So this makes me a Christian. You know, I believed in myself through all my hardships and follies, and now it was time to put my faith in something higher than myself. And to me, that is what religion is. You don't need to know some philosophical reasoning to, like, prove your faith, or you don't need facts and logic, or whatever. You know, it's faith, belief. I know I can't prove him to you, but all, I mean, that's all it is. It's faith. It's, and I believe in God. You know, that's all it is. It's not like, well, according to uh, the Pascal Wager by Thomas Aquinas or whatever, you know, I, there, it's not that. It's just faith. That's all it is. I, I don't believe, you know, d that d this doesn't mean that I think the world was created 6,000 years ago or that I follow, like, some customs, in tr you know, that, you know, that, cr that the church dictates and all or whatever. I just believe. And it's that simple. You know, you know, this has been a long road, but as I start picking up the pieces from the earthquake that rocked my life, and now as I climb out of my dark hole and into the light, I'm regaining the pieces to find that stability back. You know, find that higher, a higher force to help root me in becoming a better man and have a strong and objective morality that I could hold myself to. It's not just ridding myself of my bad vices, but knowing that there is a bigger calling beyond just my personal struggle. It's to strive towards a higher order to return to stability and return to security. And to do that, I must finally cast off my demons that had plagued me when I was such an I was so when I was so atomized from the world that you know that I was I thought it was all just a simulation. You know, there's a proverb: fall back seven times and get back up eight. You know, you know, I fell over and over again, and but I kept standing back up. And if I could only say one lesson from the time when I was in the Marine Corps boot camp, it's this. It's all in your head. It's 80% mental. If you believe in your goal and just show up and keep trying, that's 80%. That's all it is. Persistence. You know, believing in yourself and your goals and values that you strive towards. Never give up. And while, yes, I can't back up my faith with facts, I have my faith with him. Just as I had faith in myself to keep on fighting. You know, just from so simple beginnings, you know, when I started that stability in my childhood where I had to, when after all that broke apart, I fell into the nihilist death trap of depression that tried to silence me for good. From that to fighting my way out of that blackness to, to, to strive towards a higher purpose for myself. And then, you know, I then started laying the groundwork for my firm world, a stable world, a world with identity and meaning and morality you know, duty to those around me, you know, to my family, to my nation, to my friends, to my values. 
And now it's time to get, go beyond just me. Beyond just fighting for my own sake. It's time to put my faith in a calling beyond myself and into the divine grace of God. So that's my video. I hope you like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help a brother out, please consider checking out my Patreon in my channel. Um, I hope, you know, I hope you aim high, wander on from America with Russian love. And God bless you all.